Welcome to Alpha Centauri. I'll be your guide. You can call me Alpha. And although I am Catholic, this isn't a Catholic channel. Here we specialize in anti-apologetics, deconstructing and analyzing the messages of apologists and polemicists across all faiths, religions, denominations, and philosophies, revealing rhetorical tricks, emotional manipulations, and fallacious propaganda along the way. Join me today as we explore Oxford's A Very Short Introduction on Christianity. The Oxford A Very Short Introduction series, intended for general audiences, aims to provide a scholarly yet concise introduction to popular but underserved topics. For me, this series has been a somewhat lengthy disappointment. Its introduction to religion was overly broad for its condensed length. Its introduction to Pentecostalism was dry and lifeless. And its introduction to Judaism was so off topic, it could have had a completely different title. Let's see if this installment in this series fares any better. Today's Oxford introduction focuses on Christianity. In this context, Christianity refers to those who believe in the ultimate reality of the God of the Bible and consider Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior. For the purposes of this video and my channel, when I refer to Christianity, Christianity will be defined as an apostolic, creedal, baptismal, and Trinitarian faith that affirms traditional orthodoxy as defined by the Church Fathers, the creeds as defined by the Council of Milan's Apostles' Creed, and the Constantinopolitan Nicene Creed. The scripture, as canonized in the Old Testament or Hebrew Bible, and the New Testament or Christian Bible as well as dogma as defined in the first seven ecumenical councils. That is what I mean by Christianity. This book, in the very short introduction series, was written by Linda Woodhead, a distinguished professor of religion and society at Lancaster University and a director of its Institute of Social Futures. She also has been a research associate of the Center for the Study of Behavioral Sciences at Stanford University. Woodhead's research focuses on the rise of no religion in Britain and the USA and the United States among post-millennials. And she frequently discusses religion, beliefs, and social values in the media. Her interest and studies encompass Neo-Hinduism, Christianity, general spirituality, and Islam, with a particular focus on the relationship between religion and social change, especially in modern times. Woodhead's work addresses issues of identity, power, and gender as relates to religion. The version of the book I read was the 2014 second edition, which is an updated and revised text from the 2004 edition. The introduction to the book is misleading. Woodhead openly states that her aim of the book is not to pass judgment on Christianity, but to present as well-informed and honest a portrait as she can. However, her biases and politics permeate the rest of the book, and her opinions overshadow the data and facts she is trying to convey. Her first chapter, titled Jesus the God-Man, while acknowledging Christianity's influence on society over the last two millennia, is marred by numerous factual inaccuracies. For example, she misstates the earliest depictions of Jesus and seems unaware of significant artistic representations, such as the shaven youth Jesus, the good shepherd Jesus, or uh, what I call the good man Jesus, in Hellenistic or Latin art. Instead, of utilizing different perspectives to highlight various methods of interpreting and understanding Christianity, Woodhead uses feminist theory, standpoint theory, anti-imperialist conquest theory, gender theory, and queer theory to undermine orthodox and traditional interpretations in favor of modern progressive and anachronistic liberal understandings. This only confuses things in a book meant to serve as a simple introduction for the uninitiated. Woodhead also dives deep into modern scholarly theory and rhetoric. For instance, she vigorously presents Bart Ehrman's theory of multiple early Christianities without adequately offering counterviews or contextualizing the dating of each movement or writing. This lack of balance alters the context 
of her claims. Her portrayal of Jesus as a human man who may or may not have been the son of God falls short of the Christian perspective she is supposedly providing for her audience. A more effective approach for an introductory overview of Christianity's claims would be to explain that Christians generally view Jesus as the incarnate Word of God, as one person within the Trinity, and that Christians historically assert that God is one being in three persons. Woodhead's failure to acknowledge this majority view and her downplaying of it as merely one of many possibilities renders her explanation dishonest. Moving on to beliefs, ritual, and narratives, Woodhead discusses the history of the early church, the development of the creeds, and the concepts of sin and salvation. Her understanding of the church's evolution from scattered home churches to a unified organized church is lacking at best and purposefully misleading at worst. I would suggest consulting useful charts or reading Eusebius's Ecclesial History instead. And Woodhead's treatment of the ecumenical councils is so brief that their significance seems to be lost in her discussion of Christian history, and their absence is detrimental to this introduction, as it is crucial to explain how Christian theology, doctrine, and dogma developed, as they are foundational to Christian faith and terminology. Woodhead's explanation of Christianity's seeming focus on sin unfairly places blame on Thomas Aquinas, portraying him as the villain. Augustine and John Calvin also receive some blame in elevating the importance of sin in theology in her explanation of it. While surprisingly, Martin Luther is cast as a hero. Woodhead's biases make this book highly unsuitable as a resource for novice or neophyte Christians. And I can't imagine what someone outside of the faith could glean from this work other than confusion when they engage with Christians in real life. Moving forward, Woodhead covers the spread of Christianity, presenting anti-monarchical, anti-imperialist, anti-conquest, and anti-colonial perspectives. She simplifies history to portray organized religion as inherently repressive and advocates for religious liberal individualism. Her Protestant bias is evident but she condemns any formal organized church or denomination as part of the oppressive patriarchy. Lutherans, Anglicans, and Presbyterians are all labeled as anti-woman, anti-gay, and anti-child in her view. Woodhead sees Christianity as a divided liberation religion, separating it into oppressed minorities and corrupt majorities. If your practice or membership numbers are in the minority, and you face repression or persecution, she sees you as the good guys, with the potential to free Christianity from its patriarchal and political corruption. Conversely, if you are in the majority, either theologically or politically, you are labeled as the bad guy, corrupted by political power and state support. Lastly, Woodhead distinguishes Christian groups not by denominational lines, but by their focus on aspects of the Godhead, Bible, or self. She categorizes these as church Christianity, biblical Christianity, monastic Christianity, and mystical Christianity. While this might seem appropriate, an introductory text and its intended audience would be better served by utilizing more common Christian distinctions, such as high church and low church, and explaining them while using her subcategories to illustrate the broader differences and similarities between denominations. The view expressed in this chapter is that the established church, whether Lutheran, Anglican, Catholic, or Reformed, was primarily concerned with the unity of church and state and felt threatened by alternative forms of Christianity. While she speaks favorably of monasticism and mystical forms of Christian expression, she demonstrates a poor understanding of them and their relationship to orthodoxy, sacred tradition, or the church, capital C. She labels both Jesus and Paul as mystics, which may have merit, but seems like an odd claim without further development or explanation. In an odd inclusion, seemingly out of nowhere, she denies that Christianity had any influence on the forming of the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, or the Bill of Rights. Why does she include this opinion? 
I have no idea. Finally, she discusses Christianity and the modern world, focusing mostly on the merits of charismatic Christianity, which she mistakenly labels as a singular form rather than recognizing its place within the greater Christian church. I believe a more careful reading of the works of Palmas, Christiansum, and Ware would benefit her understanding. She also acknowledges Pentecostals favorably, but does not fully endorse them due to their perceived anti-liberal views. Surprisingly, she has mostly positive things to say about evangelicalism and fundamentalism, albeit still portraying them as anti-liberal Christian voices. There are some terminology errors as well, such as labeling a Catholic movement as Pentecostal Catholicism instead of the correct term of charismatic Catholics. Additionally, she overlooks thriving and growing types of Christianity, such as Orthodox and traditional forms, while mentioning declining movements like evangelical fundamentalism as flourishing. In her conclusion, she expresses hope that the internet's global exposure of ideas will lead to the transformation of organized Christian religion into a more modern, liberal, marginal religion. This is not an introduction to Christianity, but rather a manifesto on what she thinks are the problems with Christian tradition and her hope for its transformation or disappearance. I cannot recommend this book. One out of five stars. Skip it. Instead, I suggest reading The History of the Ancient World by Susan Wise Butler, which is a far more accurate and just as relevant as this book to the subject of Christianity which is to say, not at all. Please like this video by hitting the thumbs up button, subscribe by clicking the red subscribe button, and share your thoughts in the comments section below. Let me know which topic or channel you'd like me to explore next. And don't forget to check out more of my videos and share them. Peace.